you just came out with a new single, Saints and Sinners, which is out on Armada right now, by the way. Um, so was there like any personal meaning behind the song, or was it more of like a global perspective? Or? It's more of like a, a global perspective. It just came together very organically when we were in the studio. Yeah. So um, I was, back in January, I was in LA for a, like 14 day, um, writing camp for my album, and uh, one of the days was um, was was when I met up with uh, M Bronx and a, a guy called David Sharp. He was running the studio, and he's a writer too. And um, yeah, it was a very nice day, and, and for all of us, a very nice session because um, we were like when we when we met, it just clicked, you know. We had this like flow of energy, and I played played them a couple of my ideas, like chord progressions. Yeah. And at the end, we picked one and we worked on the track and. After one hour, we were basically done with the whole concept of the song. Oh, that's awesome. And then we started cutting the vocal, and after yeah. another hour, we were done with that too. So, and then we started tweaking everything, stacking vocals, layering stuff, and pre-arranging a little bit yeah. for the whole thing. And uh, it was a super quick session, and, and, and it was a very creative one. And um, and Bronx, she's a great singer. His voice yeah. is, is amazing. And, and after that, I went back to the studio and I worked on the track for another week or two. Myself, I had a guitar player coming in, so we recorded some guitar stuff with him, and, and, and it's really, it was really nice to see the track coming together with the vocal, with the real organic sounds, and, yeah. and I'm happy with the result, and, and again, I'm getting great feedback from the people. So, um, and the video is coming out next week. Oh, stay tuned for that. I'm excited for that. So, out of curiosity, have you? Like always, stayed more towards the like progressive trance, progressive house end of things, or have you ever wanted to like you know dabble in another genre? Or yeah, that's that's a good question because I actually have always been into the same kind of like tempo range on the twenty eight BPM. Mm -hmm. Progressive house has been or is is my thing. Yeah. And I had some techie tracks like a couple of years ago on Tool Room. Okay. And I'm like there are these excursions, but um, yeah, that, that maybe shows that I'm, I'm like, um, in my head there's a lot of other music going on as well, and the good thing is that I'm putting out my album now, and mm -hmm. next year, and yeah. I'm working on it right now, and this will show people how diverse my style actually is, and for example, my next single is uh, coming out end of September, okay. and it's called Magic, and this is uh, kind of setting the pace for the album, because it's at 105 BPM, which is really? totally different from yeah. what I've ever done. So I'm really excited to see people's reactions and it kind of reflects um, also my how I see the music world right now. So there's everything is possible between like 95 or 90 BPM and 128 and that's what I want to do. And I have so many, as I said, so many ideas in my head and in my studio and my heart is uh, laying around for years and finally I can put them, take them out of the, the drawer and, 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 and turn them into real tracks and, and most of the tracks on the album, basically all of the tracks are based on, on, on real songs, with vocals and so it's a, it's a lot of music going on and, and, and for, for the, the stuff for the album I'm, I'm going with a very musical approach so I don't I don't want to be limited to like a certain tempo or like a certain way of okay. arranging like an intro or a, a, a breakdown and a drop and back to the break and but um, I, c I can now go just with the music flow, you know, like let me yeah. let myself inspired by the, by the vocal, by, the, by an idea I have and, and, and I, can, I can use different like tempo ranges and uh, it's really exciting and um, yeah. I can't wait to, to, to show you my new stuff and then to, to get the music out. No, that's awesome. And I feel like that's so important, like that's the way like music and art should be, it's just really fluid and it's like if you're locked into like this box that like you're required yeah. to make everything with this. I feel like it's so limiting. And after a certain time, it gets kind of like boring because you 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 have to start repeating yourself. I've yeah. never I've never repeated myself in my tracks normally. Okay. Uh, all all the tracks I put out are different from the, the one or the ones I did before. But still, you 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 reach a certain like a, a kind of a, a a border or like a, a a limit where you say, okay, I can't go further than that. So I have to change either in style or in tempo or like. Whatever, and, and that's what I do right now. So I'm, I don't feel limited to do anything, and I'm, I'm getting my inspiration now from from any anything from trap, from dubstep, from future days, and okay. chill trap, chill step, whatever. Like all these new things and, and, and the old things, and I have a, a an old school house song on the album, and uh, so there's everything there. And the, the, that's fun for me as a producer. It's, it's yeah. Really fun. 
And I feel like it's just like so important to actually appreciate all the different genres because there are some people I know who are just you know so locked into trance, and it's, I love trance, but I feel like that can also be limiting, you know. Yeah. So it's I think it's really good that you can appreciate everything, kind of use everything. Okay, so I'm curious, what is like the most outrageous thing that has ever happened to you during a gig? I don't have these big stories actually, but um, maybe when um, I played in Canada and um, or I think it was Toronto, and I was on stage and a big crowd in front of me, and the, there were there were guys in the crowd who were like trying. I think they were like having a competition between themselves, like who can make it on stage and give me a high five. Oh, yeah. I tried to do that, like jump on the stage before the bouncer or the security came and, and jump in the way. Yeah, that sounds like get thrown out really fast. Yeah, one guy came up and he gave me a high five, then he jumped he jumped back into the crowd because he, he just wanted to escape with the security, but the people mm -hmm. went away so that he just fell on the floor and I, it was right in front of me and I was like, oh my god, what, what happened to this guy? But um, yeah, I, I, I actually I found out that, that at the end of my set that he was okay. I, I invited him for drinks, and then he. Since then, I've seen him a couple of times coming to my sets. Really? And I always have a chat with him, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty crazy at that time. And I was like, "Oh my god, what happened?" So maybe the secret is that you're actually supposed to jump on stage during shows. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know any kind of like weird OCD like good luck thing that you like to do during a show, like. I, I, I DJ and I always have to have this weird little turtle with me. It's like, I, I don't know why, I just like to keep it in my case with me. Really? Yeah, I, I feel like it's good luck, it might not be. I don't know. I don't have anything like that to be honest. No? No, I just, um, no, no. Um, I just try to focus on my on my set like 15 minutes before I go on. I yeah. go through the tracks, I can play, I listen to the crowd, I listen to the DJ playing, I try to like, um, see what's going on with the why, mm -hmm. but I don't have any any special rituals or things I've been. No weird turtles. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> um.